So I want to look at Lincoln quickly from the standpoint of five major challenges that he had. The first one, the obvious one, is the Fort Sumter crisis. Then we're going to talk about how Lincoln dealt with the major problem of keeping the border states in the Union. Then I want to talk about his cabinet, which again was a huge challenge for him. The fourth one that we'll, do, we'll share on this morning is the issue of emancipation. And finally, finding a general or a cadre of military leadership that could win the Civil War. Let's go quickly to Fort Sumter. Think about the fact that uh, you are inaugurated on the 4th of March, 1861, and you are immediately faced with a major crisis. Think about the fact that as a president, or think about any big job that you may have taken, and there's normally a honeymoon. I've been a college president twice. It resulted from a national search. They decided that I was the best person that wanted the job and there was a honeymoon where I couldn't do anything wrong. Everybody loved me and shook hands and smiled at me. Well, Lincoln begins his presidency with no honeymoon at all. He doesn't have an opportunity to even settle in. You know, when we often say that a brand new legislature, legislator's first job is to find out where the restroom is. There are all kinds of things that are just routine. None of that time was available for Lincoln and he faced a no-win situation. At the very beginning then of his administration, he was faced with a crisis in the Charleston Harbor, Har Harbor and a dilemma of unbelievable consequences. I believe it was the most taunting, the most vexing, the most tremendous decision that Lincoln had to face because on one hand there might be peace, partial peace, on the other hand there would be civil war. Lincoln could not avoid trouble with this crisis. He could simply choose between alternatives of trouble. And think about how his predecessor, James Buchanan, handled it. Obviously, he was anxious to get out of Dodge. And he said in his December message to Congress, he knew that secession was illegal, but there was nothing he could do about it. He, actually, he truly ducked the situation. What were the complexities for Lincoln? Well, first off, the center of the secession controversy was Charleston. It's fair to say that Charleston at the time of the Civil War with its emotion and its rabid uh, Confederate attitudes and states' rights attitude was the most unstable psychological place in the country. It was an explosive atmosphere. It was a tinderbox. Normally when mediators come together and help out in a crisis, they often suggest that there be a cooling off period. Let's back off. Let's let cooler heads prevail. Let's think about this a little bit. That option was not available to Lincoln. It was a change of administration. Think about it in the worst possible situation. You remember in 1832 when South Carolina uh, issued the nullification uh, edict and Andrew Jackson responded with force. He mobilized the military. Lincoln did not have an adequate military and if he had mobilized the forces that would have been viewed as provocation and that would have tipped the scales I believe for civil war. Well the deep south those seven states that had already seceded and formed the confederacy were not interested in any conciliation or any compromise but remember there were four critical states that had not left the Union, Arkansas and, and Tennessee and North Carolina and Virginia. They still held out hope. The die was not cast and Lincoln thought maybe he had a chance to hold them. On March 15th, less than two days after his inauguration, or about two weeks after his inauguration, I should say, Lincoln put the question to the cabinet and only his Postmaster General Montgomery Blair agreed that Fort Sumter and Fort Pickens ought to be held. Every other member of his cabinet said we ought to give them the forts and capitulate. What a test of presidential leadership. When your senior advisors all recommend basically one thing and you take a stand, no, we're going to hold the forts because it's too big a concession. Well, Lincoln, I believe, responded in a way of great courage. 
he responded in a way that was basically peaceful and non-aggression. You remember he sent a re relief force that was only taking supplies, it was not an armed vessel, and he even informed the South Carolina governor that they were coming. Well, that did not work. On April the 12th, of course, the Confederates fired on Fort, Sum Fort Sumter, and on the 14th, Fort Sumter fell. Lincoln now faced even a greater crisis, Civil War. The second crisis and challenge to his leadership I want to talk about is saving the border states for the Union. The Kentucky situation certainly offered Abraham Lincoln with a grave challenge. I believe that the presidency hadn't been held by a man of the kind of understanding spirit, diplomacy and tact, and understanding of border state sentiment, Kentucky would have been lost. And if Kentucky would have been lost, then it would have meant that the Ohio River would have been the boundary between the two warring factions. Think about those states of Missouri, Kentucky, and Maryland. They basically provided a buffer between the two parts of the warring nation. And you take those away, and you move the Confederacy much closer to the Union. No one understood better than Lincoln what it meant to lose Kentucky. He said, I think to lose Kentucky is nearly to lose the whole game. Kentucky gone, we cannot hold Missouri, nor I think Maryland. These all against us, and the job on our hands is too large for us. We would as well consent to a separation at once, including the surrender of the capital, which is a convenient segue to Maryland. Think about the strategic location of Maryland, literally surrounding the U.S. Capitol and standing between the Confederacy and the North. And to, lead, to lose Maryland could also, I think, be a catastrophe for the Union cause. It is hard to imagine a victory losing Maryland. And then, Mar then Missouri. Missouri ought to be thought about as the most vexing and the most contentious of all of the border states and maybe the most of all states that fought in the Civil War. Great confusion, great turbulence, and Missouri had its own Civil War. If you haven't had an opportunity, look at Michael Fellman's book entitled Inside War. These three states, membership in the Union was very fractured, very tenuous, and very fragile, and Lincoln had to deal with them in a very delicate matter. He exercised great diplomacy and great tact, urged restraint among Union people, and he also responded, though, with strength when it was called for. Clearly, Missouri was held in the Union because of strong military strength, and in Maryland, the same thing could be true. The Lincoln administration watched very carefully the fall elections in 1861 to see what happened, and he took extreme measures. He arrested 19 members of the, of the Maryland legislature because he thought, his administration thought, that they were traitorous. And then when the mayor of Baltimore and the governor of Maryland said, we don't want any more Union troops to be moved through our state, Lincoln had to face another real important situation because they were concerned that after that mob had attacked the 6th Massachusetts, they didn't want more mob activity or more hostility. And Lincoln responded with unmistakable firmness, and I love his statement. He said, we must have troops, and they can neither crawl under Maryland nor fly over it. They must come across it. 